This is the anatomy and histology, a little bit of embryology, of skeletal muscle. Um, what I'm going to try to do is explain things on the board and then use actual examples of electron microscopy and some light microscopy to give you what it actually looks like. But hopefully with the representation you'll understand and then when you look at the thing it's like, ah, oh, got it, I know what everything is. So we're going to start at the beginning and that is with the myoblasts. In development, what happens is that a bunch of myoblasts, individual cells, line up one at a time next to each other, side by side. And it's just one cell thick, but a chain of myoblasts all in a row. And each of them have their own nucleus, each of them have their own striations, each of them look like they're going to be a muscle fiber cell. Well, what happens is they link up really tight, side to side, and then just dissolve the cell membrane between them. Myoblasts are amalgamized together to form a muscle fiber. A muscle fiber is the one cell that makes up the muscle fiber. The fiber is the cell. These jagged edges mean that the fiber keeps going off to the left and to the right. In fact, from origin to insertion, there is one long muscle fiber, one long cell that kept all of the nuclei from its original myoblasts, except there's no, now there's no barrier between them and the striations go the entire length of the cell. And you'll notice to make room for these fibrils, which we'll discuss in a moment, the nuclei are all pushed to the side. Muscle cells, muscle fibers, from origin to insertion, are one long cell the whole way across, multinucleated and one cell thick. These are permanent cells. You can see why. They don't have any myoblasts to fuse together. So if they're injured, no getting them back. The only thing a muscle can do, a muscle fiber, is hypertrophy or atrophy. Increase the amount of stuff, but not the number of cells. If we look at the very edge of a fiber, this is the cell now, and zoom in, what we'll see are a couple of things. First, the cell membrane is a lipid bilayer, just like in every cell. The nucleus is pushed off to the side and right up against the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is called a sarcolemma. The nucleus is still called the nucleus. That's good. And then there are these longitudinally arranged structures called fibrils. The first one I'm just going to color all red. A fibril runs in the same direction and orientation as the muscle fiber cell does, in this case left to right. And just outside it is going to be a smidgen of endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum in a muscle cell is called a sarcoplasmic reticulum. On either side is sarcoplasmic reticulum. And then I'm going to draw a more detailed version of what these fibrils look like. These fibrils are actually repeating patterns. Equidistant. They've got the sarcomeres inside them. These are the Z-lines at the edge of the sarcomeres. There are bands, dark staining material, 
small regions of light. And this pattern repeats over and over and over again. And on the outside of this is a small band of sarcoplasmic reticulum. What's really interesting is for the most part, each individual fibril separated from each other by a sarcoplasmic reticulum has a similar structure and almost always are they perfectly aligned with one another. They don't have to be, but very often on electron microscopy what you'll see is that the Z lines of the sarcomere line up perfectly with the, the, the Z lines on the next one. So the orientation is the muscle cells all lined up left to right. They formed one large cell which goes left to right, which has striations that go left to right. The fibrils are running left to right, and the fibrils are made up of repeating patterns of sarcomeres stacked one next to the next, next to the next, next to the next, next to the next, and fibrils that are next to each other line up so they all look like they're one functional unit. This is an electron microscopy of a muscle fiber. We are actually within the fiber, inside the skeletal muscle cell. The nucleus is not in this field, nor is the plasma membrane in this field. We are at a super zoom magnification, looking at multiple fibrils within a single muscle fiber. On the screen are five fibrils, each fibril running left to right. They are longitudinally arranged, all running in the same direction as each other. Each fibril is created by repeating stacks of sarcomeres. The edges of a sarcomere of one fibril approximates the edges of a sarcomere of the neighboring fibril. They're basically lined up next to each other. Only one is clearly visible in this image, edge to edge. But there are two other sarcomeres, each disappearing off the other edge of the screen. Most of the field is taken up by fibrils, but each fibril is separated by a small amount of sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the field is also punctuated with mitochondria. So now let's look at the sarcomere. This is the thing that gets everybody. All right. <clears throat> This is how I do it. It helps me. I never forgot. I hope it helps you. The sarcomere runs Z line to Z line because Z is the end of the alphabet. Z is also the end of the sarcomere. The M line is in the middle. And the M line is also thick. The M line is thick because the myosin that's attached to the M line in the middle is the thick filament. They have these bare zones, and then they're going to have the areas with the myosin heads. We'll explore what this means in just a second. Bare region, myosin heads. Now, you probably know already that skeletal muscle runs on actin and myosin. Well, if the M line is in the middle and is thick because it has myosin, and the Z line is the attachment for something, must be the other thing, the only thing we don't have is the actin. Now, my problem is actually making this look equidistant. I'll show you a better drawing when we're done with the explainer. Okay, the Z line makes sense, the M line makes sense. The M line also has the myosin, that's why it's thick. Okay, that's easy to get. What confuses the hell out of people is the bands. And because the bands got the letters that, that named them based on what type of refractoriness to light they did. So don't ever try to associate the letter of the band with something in this. Particularly what you should not do is associate the A band with actin, no. Instead, I do this convoluted thing which works. If you have a better way to do it, please let us know. Okay, <clears throat> the A band is the alpha. And being the alpha, he's gonna of course park himself right in the middle of the kingdom. 
and he's just gonna reach out and grab whatever he can and he's got some political sway so he's going to convince the Myosin people and the Overlap people to join <laughs>